Okay, so a few weeks back, we shared a series here on Instagram that was focused on how to handstand. So today I want to go a little bit further when, than what that highlight taught you and teach you the handstand to chaturanga, otherwise known as the low plank. And if you did not check out that highlight series, I recommend going back because it will teach you the fundamentals of what it takes to achieve that perfect handstand, some warm-up drills to help you progress, get ready, make sure that you avoid injury as you are getting ready to handstand, and then beginner all the way to advanced handstand drills. So like I said, this specific skill I will teach today is going to go beyond what that highlight taught you. So make sure to start with the highlight before even taking one step into a handstand to chaturanga. If you are able to complete some of the skills taught in that highlight, then I recommend at least starting with handstand hops. We've created a post earlier this week that will touch on how to do the full skill of handstand hops, as well as a regression to help you to build up to your handstand to chaturanga. As with any gymnastics, body weight fitness skills, you really want to make sure that you are finding the right progressions for you. So making sure that you are warming up properly and learning these skills in a sequence so that you have a strong foundation when you are ready to go to that next step rather than not having the proper stability, strength, or mobility, jumping into a skill before your body is truly primed and prepared for it and then possibly hurting yourself. So with that said, let's begin with a warm up to make sure that we are ready to do our handstand to chaturanga. So for this specific skill, I would recommend starting with something that's going to warm up your lowering into that chaturanga position. So a plank would be a great place to start. We can start either with our legs extended in a full plank, or we can start with our knees down on the ground this is going to shorten the lever of our legs and require that we use less of our body weight um, to support ourselves so it's not as heavy as we are lowering down all the way to the floor. Keep your gaze straight out in front of you. Keep your core nice and tight. Imagine squeezing your legs together Squeezing that upper back and pushing into the floor just to get that back nice and warmed up. As you move into the lowering, you can start to come back into child's pose. This is just going to be an opposite action. So lowering down, you're contracting the upper back. Sitting back, you're stretching out that upper back. starting to flow through these two movements. Once you get nice and warm there, you can begin coming up into your full plank and then lowering down into your chaturanga, squeezing those legs together, squeezing the glutes, keeping the core nice and tight. When you get to the bottom, just go ahead and place your body on the ground, come all the way back up into that full plank position. Again, this is just our warm-up, so we don't have to be perfect. We're really trying to just focus on waking the muscles up, not going immediately to that full skill. It's all about progressively increasing intensity. Bring those legs out, keeping those elbows really nice and tight, close into our body. And as I'm lowering down, you can see I'm creating a 90 degree angle here, keeping my elbows stacked over my wrist. That's going to keep me in a nice, strong, stable, supported position, rather than having my elbows way out to the side, not keeping my forearm in that straight line and losing that efficient transfer of energy that happens when I keep a straight line with my joints stacked. After you are nice and warm, 
going through that lowering all the way down to the ground movement, we can go ahead and start warming up the legs in a downward dog position or an A-frame. So pushing our hands into the ground, tucking our toes under, lifting hips all the way up to the sky. And you can start with just warming up the calves, lowering feet down to the ground, lifting heels up towards the sky, starting to get a little bit of movement all the way down the back to the legs, from the bottom of your ankles, all the way up towards your bottom. Letting the upper body rest here. Breathing through the stretch. And then we'll go ahead and start raising a leg into three like a dog. So if you watched that post from earlier this week, this is the regression for the handstand hop. So you can see I'm slowly making my way to the full skill. Switching sides on our handstand hop regression. We're just building mobility through the backs of the legs and the hamstrings. We're engaging the core here, engaging the glutes as we lift that leg. Trying to focus on nice straight legs. Coordinating the movement in the body. Next, let's go into a little bit more concentrated of a this warm up. So you don't want to immediately ever just jump into your handstands. You always want to make sure your wrists are properly warmed up. There are a lot of tendons and ligaments in the wrists that you want to be careful not to just go upside down, put all of your weight into your wrists and possibly um, get injured. So for our wrist warm up, coming into a stable position, and then rocking gently front to back here. Starting to imagine gripping the floor with the pads of our fingers. What that looks like is, imagine that you have your hands on some towels, and you're just trying to scrunch your hand to bring the towel in closer. That is what gripping with your finger pads looks like. And what that allows is for you to be able to really keep the traction and control. So once you do get upside down on your hands, you go ahead and turn hands facing outward. Once you do get upside down, you're able to use between your palms and your finger pads. Um, kind of, you're able to shift your weight to find your center of balance. And it's a very, very micro movement, but it allows you to control that handstand rather than just picking up this momentum, not being able to fight to find your center and just kind of falling up down. Once you have your hands turned out, go ahead and start rotating Flipping your hands under so they're facing the midline of your body, stretching the opposite side of the wrist, going into wrist extension here, moving between the two, wrist flexion, and wrist extension. And then finally for the wrist, I like to do a little bit of wrist circles, and then flexion extension, standing with my arms fully extended out to the sides. I feel like it allows tendons all the way up into my forearms to really get nice and warm. Now that we are nice and warm through our full body, woke up all those muscles that will be involved in this movement, we will go into the handstand hop. Find one leg that you want to begin on, whatever you feel more stable. And we're 
going to reach towards the ground and then just find a slight hop off this leg, off the standing leg. So coming down to the ground, reaching here, a slight bend in the knee to load that hamstring of the standing leg. Bring a little bit of active energy to the lifted leg. Find a nice strong grip through the fingers. And then again, bend at the knee, load that hamstring, hop up. As you hop, you'll feel your core begin to engage. Stay actively pressing through the hands. Use the core to slowly lower. So the reason, I've kind of already said this, but just to reiterate, the reason you want to take a very small hop off of that standing leg is so that you don't over kick and lose control. So a small kick, you can just start right here. Be comfortable with just leaving the floor. As you build confidence, then you can hop a little more powerfully off the leg to get your hips over your center, finding that center balance with just the one leg inverted. The other leg will be following it in that split position, but having that split position makes it easier to stay balanced while you're upside down rather than having to balance with both legs overhead. Moving into the final skill of what you all came for, handstand to chaturanga. We are going to do the handstand hop, but this time we can either bring both legs up to a full handstand if we feel comfortable and then split the legs on our way back down, leading with landing with the leading leg first and then catching into our low plank with the following leg. Or we can just hop up into the handstand hop, keep those legs split, and then whichever leg we hop hopped off of, that standing leg, is going to be the first one back down to the floor, touching, and then that follow leg will help us to land in our low plank. Preparing as if I'm going into the handstand top. And you can come into upward dog. So in that version, I did not come up into the full handstand. I did not do anything with splitting the legs, they stayed in the exact same handstand hop position the whole time. The more advanced next progression, I would say, would be coming up into a full handstand, splitting into the opposite legs at the top, coming back down. So what you can see me doing is coming into that full handstand, but when I get up there, as I lower back down, I don't just drop my legs to the floor. You need to be able to, from the handstand, start to slowly lower your upper body to counterbalance that weight as it comes down, rather than just, than just letting the feet slam. That's going to be a critical factor here. And that does it for Handstand to Chaturanga tutorial. Make sure if you give it a shot, you tag me. If you have any questions after going through the full progression, or if you have any questions about how to regress any of the movements to get to this point, let me know and I will be happy to help you out. Thanks for tuning in.